Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Broken Arrow. This is the demo that is running for a week straight from the 6th to the 13th. I hope you found some time to play through it yourself. If you haven't, go check out my one hour long gameplay of the demo mission. I was the first to ever complete it. And I actually completed it in a bugged version uh, where basically everyone crashed but I somehow got lucky. Today we're diving into the USA Arsenal just to go through the different types of units. But do keep in mind that everything you do see here is subject to change and uh, probably won't be final. In terms of like the menu icons here, these are all final and they look very nice and clean. But in terms of like the overall way of, you know, clicking where, where to click to upgrade your units and all that kind of stuff and images here, uh, they're all a work in progress and most of them are placeholders. Anyways, let's dive into it and just kind of go through all the beautiful types of units here and just enjoy our time. So in the recon tab, we are introduced to the Armored Knight. This guy carries a Browning machine gun but the cool thing about this unit is, is that it can laser designate targets. And with laser designation, you can guide laser guided bombs and laser guided uh, artillery shells, such as the Excalibur artillery shell that the USA has. Now on the menu here on the right side, we have some interesting statistics. First of all, the points that this unit costs. Once again, everything is subject to change. Then the armor values or the protection values against different types of ammunition. First of all, kinetic, which is basically just a shell that tries to pierce a hole in your vehicle and then we have high explosive anti-tank basically something that also wants to explode after piercing a hole in your vehicle and it gives you different values for each of these two different types of uh, ammunition that it might be up against now if you go to a flyer gmg or gmv we are introduced to the first type of customization we can do which is the weapon customizations and this can go from an m2 browning to a gau 19 minigun to a mark 47 agl or to a chain gun which is very very fun to see now other information that we have here under the uh under the armor profile is the health of the vehicle the speed the recon or the optics or recon values the stealth the weight and the amount of seats that there is in here and the cool thing about that is you can mix and match different types of infantry and put them in the vehicle as long as there are seats which is just insanely fun and especially with helicopters that really makes for like a combined arms approach now when we move to the force recon here we are met with the first different type of infantry units. And there's something interesting about infantry units right now. These two guys here are carrying 84. If they are incapacitated, the rest of the squad loses anti-tank capabilities. I don't know if this is going to be changed in the future, uh, such as the other uh, crew members or crew squad members take over the weapon, but they maybe like have a delayed uh, rate of fire or something like that. Uh, because most of the time, these guys are really trained heavily in anti-tank while the rest... Uh, is probably also trained but not to the same extent other than that the weapon models look beautiful and it's actually modeled correctly we have four m27s two of them have an underbarrel grenade launcher and we have two mark 38s uh, which is this guy and that guy and it's just looking really nice the unit models are definitely really really pretty and things are to scale as well it kind of looks nice now when we move to the humvee gmv here once again we can adjust all the weaponry and the cool thing is, it tells you everything you need to know about the different types of uh, weapons and the ammunition that you have with these units. The Humvee LRA S3. I actually spoke to a guy and his uncle was uh, apparently uh, the one designing this LRA S3, which is pretty cool. But yeah, now we move on to the armor upgrades of a unit. Right now, these are the armor values or the protection values. If we go to the frag armor kit... It increases it across the board because basically everything gets another layer of sheet metal and this protects against both kinetic and heat uh, at a better uh, well it protects more against both of those now when we move to the rws here which is a regular humvee that we got we can upgrade the weapon to the mark 19 and we can even upgrade the armor from the base to the frag armor kit and it's just a ton of fun ifav toe you can upgrade the toe or depending on how you look at it, downgrade it to a Mark 19 or an M2 Browning. And the cool thing about this kind of stuff is, instead of having like five different types of IFAVs uh, next to each other, basically in a list in the uh, deck building menu, you just have one that you can fully customize and it just cleans up the game so much more. JLVT, beautiful vehicle. This thing is an amazing looking truck. Honestly, I wouldn't mind driving this IRL. Weapon package, all the way to the M230 auto cannon or an m230 with javelin i'm mean, just what is this that is just overpowered as hell i'm loving it now when we look a 
bit further, LAV25. You guys have already played with this in the demo. If you haven't already, please do download it. This can also be upgraded with better armor, giving you much more protection against kinetic and heat at 69. Nice. And the M7 Bradley Fist. Once again, this unit can laser designate things because it has that uh, LRAS uh, or either way, an optic on top that it can laser designate stuff with. And here we introduce with something new, different types of ammunition. Now I know that Steel Division had this, which was pretty cool. I gotta hand them that. In this game, you can actually customize the amount of AP ammo you want to have or the amount of high explosive ammo you want to have, depending on what kind of engagements you're planning to take on. For example, the AP ammo here has different uh, dispersion rates, damage, uh, suppression, uh, actually same suppressive fire, but different penetration values compared to the heat. For example, the dispersion is increased when you go for high explosive rounds and so is the damage and the blast radius and uh, the penetration is changed uh, drastically because it's a different type of ammunition, basically explodes on impact and it's, uh, yeah, it's meant for different types of targets. So depending on what you want to do, you even have an unmanned helicopter, which is pretty cool. And you can make this a completely different type of a helicopter if you want to. You can just add rockets to it. You can have a mixed loadout if you hate tanks equally as infantry. Or, you know what? You just dislike tanks in general. Go for four hellfires. That is just amazing. And the same is true for the Reaper. You can just go with whatever you want. In this case, you can either leave it empty and just have four hellfires for a little bit of a cheaper drone. Or you can go completely ballistic and just add eight of them. Now, the pararescue infantry here, a ton of fun. And I just want to appreciate the unit card here on the top. That looks absolutely beautiful. I definitely need to get those wallpapers uh, from Felix. But yeah, the SCAR gun models here. We have four SCARs in the squad. One, two, three, four. And uh, a Mark 12 at the back there. And a Mark 46 in the front. Look at how nice it's looking. Looking absolutely stunning. We have Rangers. These guys look angry. These guys are uh, definitely going to be a ton of fun to play with. They have the RAWS. Pretty good anti-tank. But yeah, all the weapon stats here are listed. And uh, everything from the armor that these guys have. Because infantry does have armor. To the health. To the squad size. The speed. The optics. The stealth. The weight. The fact that they can deploy smoke is all shown here. And they can sprint as well. Now the RSOV, really weird looking vehicle, can even be upgraded with a Mark 48. So something as useless as a buggy that has not even windows can be a useful useful vehicle if used correctly and upgraded correctly. Now scout snipers here. America does get sniper teams and these guys I believe will be the ones that can also laser designate targets uh, later on. Right now it's not possible, but at some point they will be too. They will, they will be able to. Now we have the Striker RV here, this is our last recon at the moment of recording. Can be upgraded with better armor and even a Mark 19 grenade launcher. And I just love the fact that the model on top actually changes. Ton of fun, a ton of fun. Now in terms of infantry, we already discussed it, but when you have infantry and you lose a squad, the weaponry of that squad is also lost for the time being until you replenish the infantry. And I kind of like this, it really emphasizes the fact that you need to reinforce, resupply, you know, and treat your squads and replenish them with the manpower that is necessary. Because this guy might already be super heavy, so he doesn't really have the ability to take on uh, a freaking Dragon 3 <laughs> anti-tank uh, weapon. So just, you know, something to think about. Then we have the Javelin team. This wasn't in the demo. Uh, the uh, developers did play with it, but perhaps they took it out for a good reason. Maybe it was a little bit too overpowered, or I'm not quite sure. The Stinger teams, beautiful unit card once again, just absolutely gorgeous. We got Light Rifleman here as well, 9-man squad, ton of fun to play with. They got AT, AT4s and everything and all the stats here once again listed. Marine Raiders, basically the pinnacle of the US military in this game so far. And the funny thing is, this guy is wearing his night visions uh, in broad daylight and so is this guy. I hope it's not night visions but thermal, that would be awkward. We have two blind people in here, so we actually have 12 squad members. Marines, units we already played with in the demo right now. And I do like that there's like a dude with a radio in the back. That kind of just increases the immersion a little bit for me. And I wonder if that is actually going to serve a purpose at some point. Because these, yeah, these guys also have it. 
they don't. But I wonder if there's like something that they will be able to do if they have a radio, such as call in artillery strikes or, you know, call in any kind of fire support to their position that is maybe off map or something. There's also mechanized rifles. I'm not quite sure what uh, the difference will be with these guys, but there's also there quite cheap as well. Uh, small team, dedicated small team, but also dedicated weapon squads with javelins. A ton of fun. Now let's move over to the vehicle tab. We already played with the AAVPs here. Really fun vehicles to work with. You can upgrade the armor, add a bit of sheet metal to it, making it really look quite mean, honestly. These guys are amphibious, which is the cool thing about this game. Amphibious units will be massively emphasized upon. And these guys, once again, are amphibious, and they can actually take a couple of good hits to the face. And they have smoke dispensers on it, uh, right back behind there at the turret. Now, the ACV will also be in the game. can be upgraded with even a Bushmaster 2 autocannon. Once again, the ammunition here is completely customizable when the game is fully released. You can determine how much of the AP or how much of the HA you want to carry. And this might affect things like your, you know, I don't know, speed or whatever, or the cost of the vehicle in general. Now, a couple of Humvees. We got a Humvee patrol that can be upgraded with like a crow's nest at the top. And the M2 can be changed into a Mark 19. Now, does the armor in this case affect the vehicle? Right now it doesn't, but it definitely will when the game is fully released. Things like these, like details like this, isn't really the point of the demo. It's mainly to find like things that uh, might, you know, break a, break a game or something. It's about finding game-breaking bugs. Look, for in example, in this case it does actually affect the speed, so not all uh, units are set up for this. But yeah, even like in terms of tow weapons, there's also variants with a tow. You can go for a tow to A to a tow to B giving it different types of uh, stats here. The GLTV, once again, is in the vehicle in the game as just a truck, no weapons on it. We also have the GLTV FSV, which is customizable with weapons. And we got the GLTV Tow to A, which we can also customize. And what I'm thinking that they'll do is probably combine all three of these because they're the same vehicle, but with different weapons on it. So you'll have like one GLTV, and then you can uh, assign either an M2, the Mark 19 or Toe to A or Tor 2B. That'll probably what they'll do. The same is true for the LEV ATM here. You can upgrade the armor. You can upgrade the weapon system. And then we move over to some of the weirder looking vehicles, but they're still interesting to use. I don't know if the US Marines actually use these a lot. But you can even add reactive armor to this. And this is a really interesting upgrade because it does not upgrade your kinetic uh, defense, let's say but it greatly affects your uh, protection against heat rounds. Now let's move over to tanks. The M1A1 FEP. We can even look down the barrel there, but never look down the barrel of a tank, guys. We can upgrade the armor, which doesn't just upgrade it everywhere. We add it to the side skirt, which affects the side armor profiles. So right now it's 125 for kinetic and heat on the side. With the A-Red, it jumps up to 325. The front stays the same, but honestly, it's already pretty good at 1290. The top is unaffected, and so is the rear. This is really giving me some War Thunder, but also DCS uh, vibes right here. The M1A1HC can also be upgraded with kind of like similar stats. Then we move on to the uh, Bradleys here. Bradleys are going to definitely be one of the main fighting vehicles that you're going to use in this game. And with the upgrades, they can be very sturdy. 405 protection and 370. But yeah, I'm not focusing too much on the stats. It basically means that we can really highly upgrade pretty much anything you want to, really. Here's a cool unit. Base armor. Base armor plus iron fist. Basically protects against incoming projectiles. But you can also go for busk reactive armor and busk reactive armor plus iron fist. Once again, the ammunition can be fully customizable. Uh, at launch. The Bradley ESV. I'm not quite sure why there's a plow on the front. I wonder if that is ac actually going to be useful in one way or the other. Definitely looking forward to that. We got our Sheridan here. Sheridan making an entrance with its big old gun that it has. And so does the Patton, the M60A1 Patton. Pretty old tank, but hey, it might serve a purpose in this game uh, for, you know, maybe it's like a cheap alternative. Striker ATGM vehicles. Not quite sure if you really need this with all the ATGMs that we have in the game. But then we also have the Striker ESV. And I really wonder what the uh, point of the ESV is going to be. 
and there's also the striker icv for carrying infantry once again can be completely customized up to a mark 19 plus a javelin and it has smoke dispensers and it can carry nine men and i believe these are also amphibious aren't they okay these ones aren't also i don't see it here but i wonder if they're amphibious irl it might also be a cool thing that if you upgrade the armor make the unit heavier it's also slower in the water or perhaps isn't actually amphibious anymore that could be a fun thing to do then we got the m1296 dragoon look at this beauty that is looking nice with the auto cannon on top the bushmaster too that looks like a ton of fun last but not least my beloved the striker mgs can also be upgraded with cage armor and I really appreciate the amount of work that they've put into the uh, unit models. That is looking quite, quite nice. And when we look at the ammunition as well, once again, all the stats of the ammunition is detailed here, giving you a good overview of whatever you are working with. Now, if you move over to support, we have all of our AA that we can think of. The Avenger can be upgraded with more armor, or instead of one missile pod and a machine gun, you can go for two missile pods if you want to, if you really hate helicopters. And there's even air conditioning at the back there. So it's quite a quite a nice little vehicle to be in. Centurion Sea Ram. Even this guy can be upgraded with better armor. Now the Hawkeye Mortar Humvee is also going to be in the game. Nice to see some uh, mortar vehicles being added. LAVAD, we already played around with this unit. And I believe we had the regular version. I don't know if we had the upgraded version. But this guy was a ton of fun to see uh, have a crack at helicopters. The one we had also had stingers. Yeah, this one also does have it. Nice. So we have a Gatling gun here. A 25mm GAU-12. And we have the two stinger pods um, at the top. LAVM mortars. Already used these in the demo. Nice to have them here as well. So we can check them out. There you go. And the cool thing about targeting with uh, artillery is like you get that menu in the bottom right. If you press fire position and you can like uh, determine how much... Uh, how long the fire mission needs to be if it needs to be at that point where you spawn it or in a line it's a ton of fun that is really nice that they put it in there now we have the iron thunder or i should say the artillery the m109 now the m109 base variant will have the excalibur rounds and these are laser guided ammunition so if something in the back let's say that plane over there is laser designated by one of your recon units with laser designation and with the artillery you fire in the vicinity of it but you're actually not on target it will be guided to its target even when the target is moving which is amazing but you can also go for the iron thunder and just blow up the entire place if you want to now more mortars m1287 mortar we got that here we have an attackums here that can be upgraded to fire uh, or we have the high mars that can be upgraded to fire attackums missiles so the base variant basically fires some uh uh, high explosive rockets six of them but you can make it fire a single ballistic missile which is probably going to do quite a lot of damage on the battlefield there what else do we have we have the m6 linebacker kind of a support bradley beautiful looking vehicle as well you can go for busk armor just to pimp it all out the maddest vehicle once again making an entrance here super cool looking truck mtvr even these guys can be armed with a gun now the patriots AA is highly customizable as well with its armor, with the amount of missiles you want to carry, but even the self-defense weapon can be upgraded all the way to a Mark 19 grenade launcher. And the same is true for the Pack 3. You can upgrade the weapons, go up to 16 missiles, get a better armor, etc, etc. Now the logistics, nothing yet, but I think it's basically just supply trucks and stuff. I'm not quite sure what they're going to add in logistics. In terms of helicopters, we can already play around with the Super Cobras. Actually, we could already play around with the Vipers in the mod or in the demo, but we got the Chupacabra as well. And the cool thing about helicopters is you can upgrade each individual pylon. You can leave it empty uh, for it to be a little bit cheaper, or you can add some hydro rockets in the case of this helicopter. We can add more guided rockets. You can add Hellfires, Sidewinders, or again, leave it completely empty for a slightly cheaper uh, plane or helicopter. Now the Viper, same story. Let's go with Hellfires, Guided Rockets, and Sidewinders. This thing is basically ready to take on anything. And in terms of the Apache, if you really hate tanks, you can go for Hellfires galore, having 16 of these bad boys. Or you can go for a little bit of a mix, 
have hellfires and rockets now the cool thing and that is kind of true for all these helis but the cool thing about the transports is that you can fully customize it as well with having machine guns on the sides with having a gun pod here and having rockets over there maybe you want hellfires instead that is also possible and this is a transport helicopter how cool is that and now you kind of made it into an attack helicopter now even the venom can be slightly upgraded you can go for mini guns on the sides and you can even add some rockets on the pylons here now we have some hydro rockets or we go for guided rockets how about that and that is a uh1j 1y venom awesome now in the air tab we have the a10 absolutely we got an a10 with sidewinders we added mavericks to it we added some hydro rockets to the bottom but there will be a cost or an actual negative effect to adding this many weapons to your plane it will increase the drag of this plane when the game is actually fully released and you might want to add some fuel as well to this uh, to this plane right now it's not possible so if you really want this a a10 to be on the uh, front line for a longer period of time you might have to you know carry less with you to make it a little bit lighter have it a little bit uh, less drag uh, in the air as well and you know have a better fuel uh, efficiency now the ac-130 will finally be in an rts game a modern day rts game that is and i, I just it's going to be wonderful to have this unit in the game we have the av8b harrier nice looking plane here and for example in this guy we can add uh agm 122s we can add some jdams we can add let's say fuel tanks and if you look here it goes from 306 or from 180 to 360 so this guy now has a little bit of more fuel and will be able to stay uh, flying around and uh, help out with the ground mission for a little bit longer now, i wonder if vtol is actually going to be a thing it looks like this guy might be able to but we'll have to look at that now center line even can be upgraded uh, we can add a gal 12 equalizer that is going to be a ton of fun ecm pods designation pods or leave it empty or leave it empty let's look at the night attack now kind of similar story with all these other planes you can add a 500 pound bombs to the bottom you can go for snake eyes you can go ahead and actually even add a thousand pound bombs to the, to the wings and you can add some fuel tanks here uh, because this guy is probably going to be quite a bit heavy now we have the b1b lancer isn't this going to be a treat because not only can you get snake eyes the cbo 87 mark 84s jsaws jasms but you can actually get tactical nukes two of them two tactical nukes isn't that awesome now besides that we have the fa18 and the fun thing with this guy is you can create an insane air superiority fighter with all of these missiles look at that that is incredible that's just insane ton of fun ton of fun to use this but yeah the amount of missiles on this plane will create a lot of drag and will affect its fuel consumption so instead of having missiles only i want to go for a couple fuel tanks we also have the fa18f once again with a ton of different types of weapons here agm mavericks but we can go for an anti-tank uh, you can also go for a bomber and you can add let me see here yeah we can add sidewinders instead and then some bombs here and then uh, maybe a bigger bomb in the bottom and just not have any fuel tanks and just hope that this guy just gets in there does his job and just gets out asap we have a tomcat wouldn't be a modern day rts without tomcat obviously center line can have some insane missiles we can upgrade it to a sparrow we can go for the phoenix but you can also make it a bomber which is pretty interesting to have a tomcat do that now on the wings you can add even zuni rockets or the phoenix so you can go for a lot of phoenix ones and fuel here we go you can go for two fuel tanks to increase and it might be a good thing with a plane like this because it is a long range interceptor but it might be perfect to add some more fuel here we have the f-15 sea eagle just a classic plane add some a120s there or a120s and have a buttload of fuel <laughs> jumping that up to 360. now you also have the strike eagle which is going to be focused on bombing and you can already tell that from the amount of bombs that we have 
but there's also the F-22 Raptor. Going to be absolutely stunning to play with this plane. The funny thing is you don't really see the bombs, they're all like kind of tucked into the bomb bay. So you can add JSAO, Stormbreakers, and the same for the starboard bay there. And last but not least, we have the F-35A, F-35B, and the F-35C that can all be upgraded to exactly what you want. You want to add Glide Bombs, you want to add JDAMs, you want to add Stormbreakers, whatever you want to do. And Stormbreakers, and AMRAMs, and JDAMs, and all of those things will be uh, fully like detailed here. These are all placeholder icons, so don't worry about that too much. But the most exciting thing is the Nuke. The Tactical Nuke. Going to be absolutely stunning. Oh yeah, that was it for the American Arsenal. I'll be diving into the Russian one as well. I just wanted to get as much info about this game as possible while the demo is still running, because we'll probably have to wait quite a long time until we get another chance to play with this game. But I will keep you guys up to date on further Broken Arrow developments, so stick around for more, and take care.